The Sharp Edge on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Mazek Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to The Sharp Edge. Today I'm in Baden, Ontario, catching up with Henry Prinzen. Mazix agronomist. Henry, how's it going? It's going great, Bern. How are you? Hey, um, it's pretty amazing. Hey, we are at Janland Farms here, the Yancey family, and we're talking with Brandon Yancey about organic soybeans. And the question I have for you is, why is Brandon on the sharp edge? Well, Brandon's on the sharp edge. You can look behind us here on this video like, wow, are these beans stellar or what? They're also pretty clean. So Brandon's using this Einbach scuffler and he's getting a lot of the weeds. It's got section control, and it's even got a camera to side shift on the hillsides because the RTK isn't doing enough for him. Let's hear all about it. Here's Brandon Yancey. So Brandon, we're out here today in your soybean field. Uh, you know, can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing on your operation and who you guys farm with and where you're farming? Yeah, we farm with our family here. Farm, I don't know, give or take 1,300 acres of all organic, some in transition, but we farm kind of from, span from Wellesley down to kind of Washington area, down Sand Hills a lot of our acres are. Farm a lot of heavy clay and then a lot, a lot of blow sand down south as well. Why did you guys kind of think, you know, let's go this organic farming route versus conventional farming and, you know, how's that work? Yep. You know, obviously it takes a lot of time in the summer to keep the fields clean. It's, yep. you know, a little bit of a different kind of, uh, you know, environment, organic farming than conventional, right? Yep. So when my parents bought their first farm, it was certified organic at the time. And it just kind of fell in right with kind of our beliefs and how everything worked out. And we had a really good mentor that was just down the road from us and really got us started and showed us kind of the ropes of how to do things. And I don't know, it, it's definitely a little more profitable, I find, than conventional farming on the smaller acres we had at the time. So it just seemed to work and we've just kind of ran with it now. So Brandon, we got some great video of this scuffler going through your guys' fields, cleaning it up. Can you give us a little bit of overview of what it actually is? Yeah, it's our, it's kind of our replacement of the classic row cop cultivator. It's, it's a 12 row unit and it seems to get the acres done in a hurry. And yeah, it works really well compared to our older unit and seems to do the trick for us. Yeah, so can you give us, you know, a little bit of background on, you know, what kind of unit is it, the nuts and bolts, how does it work, you know, some of the, yeah. the really neat parts of it that, you know, the average row cultivator would lack? Yeah, so it's a Einbach Chop Star. It's got additional wheels on the back that kind of work in the row, helps hill it and also kind of pulls out some of your small weeds. And then the biggest thing on it is really the camera. We run it in conjunction with RTK, but we have a lot of rolling hills. So the camera just makes it perfect where we're sub inch accuracy then, and you'd stay always perfectly on the rows. And yeah, the main thing is we can always be within an uh, inch to two inches within the row and do as much as possible cultivation and kill as many possible weeds as we can. So we also saw some video of it. You know, it looks like it's got section control. What yep. kind of advantage is that for you yep. out in the field? So the section control is huge for us on our farm. So we farm a lot of funny shaped fields. We don't got many square ones around here that are all triangles and stuff like that. So when you come up to the headlands, it'll start pulling them out at one at a time across the machine. So in theory, we're able to scuffle every square inch of the field. And that's huge for us because we're always going for organic food grade soybeans. So that little bit of staining you have, if you go up to a headland and you leave that triangle worth of weedy beans, that little bit of weeds in there could stain your whole batch, stain the combine, and then you can drop your premium, which is substantial. So we've also seen, you know, some other weed control options in the past. You know, we've seen the weed zapper or the flamers and corn. Have you ever, you know, considered yeah. going that road or yep. is that not maybe as good of a fit as this scuffler is in your operation? Yeah, so starting with the flamer, I guess, the flamer is a very, it's a really good tool. And as an organic farmer, you need every tool in the shed to do a good job every year. But saying that, it's a one time every year and maybe three of your fields out of 30. You don't use it on every field. It's very, very specific and you have to have your timing just right. So it just made more sense for us to invest in this scuffler that we use consistently on every acre every year several times. And the weed zapper, 
we get a custom done by a local guy and it works good for us. We still, we still use it, but as far as I'm concerned, I would rather stop the weeds before they got tall like they are. So that's kind of, we invest our money in preventing them rather than dealing with them. So overall in the operation, like how good of weed control can you expect? Like, yeah. is this field here, you know, is this what you're seeing everywhere or sometimes it's not quite as good? Yeah. You know, are you pretty happy on your yeah. ROI you've got on this scuffler? Is it doing the job you really hoped? Yep, this is, this is kind of, this is about what you expect. You're never going to get them all. I mean, unless you're perfect and it's, yeah, it helps all over. It's everything in your operation really to do the whole weed control, tine weeder and a lot of other different things. But this is kind of what we're looking for out of the machine. If we can get it to this, obviously you always want the perfect fields, but we're really, really happy with the field we're standing in here. Um, the ROI on this thing, it's, <laughs> yeah, it pays for itself over and over every year again. So it's, it's a no brainer for us ourselves. So, but you do it, you need the acres to go over it. And yeah, you need the time yourself to do it. Cause it's, it's a very large time investment to get across everything on the clay ground and that we kind of typically do two times a year, three times a year on, depends on the year, but uh, on the sand ground that it's good at growing weeds. So you're, there's very commonly years we're going over four or five times with a scuffler. So you got to really be ready to put the time in. So Brandon, you know, what's the future look like for you here on this farm and your organic farming? And, you know, are there any tips or, you know, some thoughts you would like to give to someone else who might think this is a path they want to go down? Yeah, on the farm itself, we're currently looking, continuing to expand and picking up acres as we go each year, just taking what we can handle. It's, it's a lot of work that goes into every acre, so you can't just go at her. You got to really be mindful of what you're doing or you can have some pretty ugly looking fields. Um, probably if anybody that's looking into going into organic, probably the biggest thing, the best thing I've ever heard about organic farming is you got to be a perfectionist, but you got to be able to handle imperfection is the main thing. Cause when you're in the field, setting the scuffler up, you got to be absolutely perfect and it takes a lot of experience and knowledge to know how to set it up. You got to take the time. You got to be in and out of the tractor 20 times in the first five acres to make sure you have everything working to like make it as perfect as possible but at the end of the day you can put all that time and effort in it and it can still be imperfect or pretty ugly it is kind of what it is that's just organic farming in a nutshell so there you have it henry great interview hey what i learned here is you know technology it, it really is charging forward even on the organic front yeah i mean when you look at this field and you talk to brandon it's incredible where we're going today you know sub inch accuracy the field is amazingly clean these tools are you know just advancing so fast forward it's so incredible even in organic agriculture and hey and these are organic beans and organic yields nothing to sneeze at no i mean these are smoking beans here you can't you can't believe it but you know these could be 60 plus bushel beans it's pretty impressive here hey. great stuff uh, we will see you next time on the sharp edge <laughs>